We designed the SL6 to be a very elegant integrated solution for your 688 and your entire bag. We wanted to keep it very simple and from the outside it does look very simple. But there is a lot going on inside and I'd like to go over some of the guts of this thing with you right now. Since you have three slot in receivers, each has two antennas, you want to be able to distribute those to just two antennas and you get a little bit better diversity performance having the antennas out here. So the RF section is right here under these cans and we spent quite a bit of time working on that section of the uh, product and worked with the other manufacturers as well. Whether you plug in receivers that have analog outputs or AES EBU digital outputs, we can accommodate those. For the analog uh, receiver outputs, we've got an A to D converter in here, which takes the six channels of analog audio, digitizes them, and sends them down the ribbon cable to the 688. So it's a full digital interconnect from the SL6 to the 688. So you don't have to worry about noise or any signal degradation. For the AES EBU output receivers, we have a sample rate converter right here because all three receivers will be running asynchronously and you need to synchronize them before sending them to the 688. So you'll get very high performance using either method. One cool aspect of the SL6 is the powering. So you can see right here, this is the built-in lithium-ion power safe battery. This is what provides juice in case you lose power, either you lose your battery or your DC input. Uh, everything will keep going, you can keep recording, you can keep receiving your wireless signals for 10 seconds before it gracefully shuts down. This is the power supply section in here, and what we've got on two of the jacks, these are floating, isolated, regulated supplies. The floating supplies can come in handy if you're interconnecting an unbalanced transmitter. And on an unbalanced transmitter, you're going to be sharing ground uh, with the power and the audio. And, and since it's unbalanced, that can cause noise problems. So having a, a floating DC output can help out in those situations. Two of these outputs are not isolated. They're connected directly to the battery and their voltage varies with the battery. So you can use those to connect up an external voltmeter if you want, but you can also use those for uh, powering additional transmitters. Each of the four DC outputs are individually switchable, so you have control over which of those are on, which are off. The USB uh, charger will do a full two and a half amps for uh, charging iPads or iPhones or Android devices very quickly. And each of these DC outputs is overload protected so you don't have to worry about a short circuit causing problems uh, out here. So back here are the DB25 connectors which interface with the slot in receivers. And the main difference between super slot and the previous unislot is that we've added control over the DB25s. When you've got this interconnected with, with a 688, you can control all the aspects of the receivers through the LCD screen on our 688. And that happens by sending signals up to the SL6, and there's a microcontroller in here which spreads those out to the three different receivers and there's a transmit and receive pin on each of these DB25s. The SL6 has its own microcontroller built into it, which takes care of all the receivers, the power supplies, and the communication between the SL6 and the 688. So one of the things the microcontroller in this product does is communicates with the receivers. Now, each wireless manufacturer's receiver uses a different protocol to talk. Um, we've standardized the connections, but each of them kind of speaks a different language. So this microcontroller 
speaks to each of these receivers and can speak in its native tongue, if you will, uh, doing the um, protocol conversion between each and the 688. The foundation of the SL6 is this wonderful chassis. Now why is it wonderful? It's because it is made out of molded carbon fiber. This stuff is really durable and really light. It's a feather white chassis, keeps your bag very light, saves on your back pain. One of the things we do with the molded carbon fiber after it comes out of the mold is we sputter coat it with aluminum in a vacuum chamber. So that gives it its shielding characteristics of metal. Um, and actually this whole thing is sputter coated with aluminum. So shielding wise, durability wise, it's just like metal, but weight wise, it's like air. So after the sputter coat aluminum, then we paint it with this durable paint. And last but not least, we put the Sound Devices logo on.